I'm going to build a microphone activator using the same circuit and components that are used in the popular Cloudlifter CL1. Links to all the videos in this series will be listed in the description below. Like I said, this is the same circuit that's used in the Cloudlifter CL1, but shrunken down to fit in a smaller case. The case that I'm using is made by a company called Neutrik. It's referred to as the NA housing. The case is a two-piece design that allows Neutrik XLR connectors to be directly screwed into the ends. The screw holes are unthreaded and can be threaded simply by screwing the screws into them. The case is made out of aluminum, so the steel screws essentially act like self-tapping screws. I'm going to use these long 28mm header pins to connect the PCB to the XLR connectors. When I designed the board, I made sure that it would fit within the case and account for the room that the XLR connectors take up on the ends. My goal is to build a microphone activator with the same circuit as the Cloudlifter CL1, but using entirely off-the-shelf parts with the exception of the custom PCB. I'll include links in the video description below for the PCB board design files and all the components and tools that are used. I'm sharing this build because it's a fun project and it's interesting to see how things work. Please don't use this information to build and sell Cloudlifter knockoffs. Besides being unethical, the market is already saturated with different brands of microphone activators anyway. If you have ideas for how any parts of this design could be improved, please leave a comment. Before we start prepping the PCB for soldering, I want to find two capacitors that are as close to the same value as possible. I'm using this cool LC meter that I built from a kit to check the capacitance values. These are 1.8 NF plastic film capacitors made by Panasonic. If you're interested in the saga of finding out the correct type and value for these, check out my previous videos in this series. Okay, we have two that are pretty close in value. Let's start assembling the board. I'm going to be using a low temp lead free solder paste that I'll dispense using a syringe mounted in this cool dispenser that I 3D printed. This is a vacuum pickup tool that's made for crafts that I've modified to use a foot switch to activate and deactivate the suction. You can get by with using tweezers, but a vacuum pickup tool is a really nice upgrade. I don't have a build video for the vacuum pickup tool yet, but I do have one for this solder paste dispenser. I'll drop a link to that video in the description below. I'm going to dispense a small dot of paste on all the pads. I'm really impressed with how this dispenser works. The reason that I'm using low temp solder on this build is because the plastic film capacitors are very sensitive to heat. This solder paste has a reflow profile that meets the heat requirements that are stated in the datasheet for the capacitors. What's nice about the vacuum pickup tool is I can use both hands to carefully position the part without having to make any movements with my fingers to release it. I have my pedal set up to provide suction when my foot is pressed down on the pedal, and then I just lift it up to kill the suction and release the part. Okay, all the components are in place now and we're ready to reflow the board. I'm using a reflow oven that I built from a toaster and a kit made by a company called Wazoo. I'll put a link in the description for the oven kit. It was a super fun build and it's one of my favorite tools in the shop. I created a new reflow profile specifically for this low temp lead free solder. I was hoping to get better shots of the solder melting during reflow, but it's a bit challenging with this setup. Always room for improvement, right? The reflow only takes a few minutes and the result is pretty great. All of the connections look solid and there's no bridging between the JFET pins. Now all we need to do is connect the board to the XLR connectors. The reason that I got header pins that are so long is so I can bend them to conform to the position of the solder cups on the connectors. You can actually slide the pins up and down in the plastic insulator material that holds them together. This allows me to adjust the heights after bending the pins to the right shape. 
It takes a bit of bending and test fitting to get the pins positioned correctly. To make room for the PCB, I have to bend the ground tab on the connector a bit so it isn't in the way. I'm going to prep the solder cups on the connectors by melting some solder in them and then removing the majority of it with some solder wick. I find it easier to cut off a bit of solder and place it into the connector cup so I have my hands free to control the iron and hold the connector. I've temporarily mounted the XLR connector backwards in the case to steady things. Throughout the assembly process, I'll be taking care to heat the connector's solder cups and to let the heat transfer melt the solder rather than letting the solder touch the iron directly. Note that I'll lightly wet the tip of the soldering iron with solder so that it makes good contact with the bottom of the solder cup. I'm also going to pre-tin the pins that will be soldered into the cups. Now we can solder the pins to the PCB and then solder the other ends of the pins to the XLR connector. Just like before, I'm cutting off small pieces of solder and placing them into the solder cups so I can heat the bottom of the cup and melt the solder that's inside. Hopefully this creates a good solid connection between the pins and the XLR connector. Later on, I did add some additional solder by heating the cups and directly feeding solder in rather than cutting off more small pieces. I've left one of the pins long on the bottom side so that I can solder it to the ground tab on the XLR connector. We only need to do this on one of the connectors. Any final adjustments to positioning of the board need to be made before doing this. Soldering this pin on the bottom creates a lot of stability between the board and the connector that would make further adjustment difficult. Now we can do the same procedure for the other connector. Note that it's super important to have both connectors screwed into the case when soldering the pins on this last XLR connector. Doing this outside of the case and then trying to get things to fit would probably be a nightmare. It's really convenient how the case comes apart in two pieces because it means you can take the whole board and XLR connector assembly out and put it back in. This makes the assembly a lot easier because you can get better access to the solder cups after tacking things together inside of the case first. All right, well, here it is. Man, this thing came out awesome. I hope it works. Spoiler alert, it totally does. I'm using this device right now to record this voiceover. The size difference between this build and the original Cloudlifter is pretty fun. All that's left to do is to add a little flair to the outside of this thing. I've always wondered how well a 3D printed stencil would work. I think the right tool for the job would probably be a laser engraver, but I don't have one. So let's try something different. Oh man, this thing came out awesome. It's not as pretty as a real cloud lifter, but I really like the old school rough look of the lettering. Well, that's it for this build. Shout out to Cloud for their world famous device, bringing life to quiet microphones everywhere. Catch you on the next one. <laughs>